type this in draft if you would paragraph as june 22nd draws near it is becoming clear that we are to be tested no settlement offer has been made and the clock continues its run to mid hello hello Dolph. hi you got a moment for you always i told you that boy he sure hasn't changed much in three years has he i just was sitting in a, in a, in a meeting with my division director and a couple other lawyers and i tried to go over the the whole day, Friday, as best I could, so they'd all understand what happened. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find something favorable for the air traffic controllers organization that came out of that hearing. Well, I would tend to disagree with you just in gut, and I know Dick was uh, pretty pleased with the with the way it finally went down. I don't think anybody. He was what? I don't think anybody lives under any illusions as to which way Judge Platt's going to go. Uh, he wasn't embarrassed? No, he said he was pleased. Okay. Why would he be embarrassed? The judge didn't believe by any of his argument. Well, it was his intent to make his argument an argument that convinced the judge? No, his I think his intent might have been to just have something on the record. Uh, did you actually think that Judge Platt was going to rule in our favor? Oh, I told you I didn't think that at all. I thought, okay. You said that you thought there was a one in a hundred chance or something like I don't remember your exact Well, answer. yeah, and I'd still you say it was... it was an uphill battle, but I thought... Dick kept trying to say, maybe... But, Your Honor, you don't understand. Maybe I haven't explained it well. Or maybe I haven't gotten my point across. Well, I think it was clear that the judge was intentionally trying to bait him. And if that judge didn't understand those arguments, the judge isn't fit to serve on the bench. I think the judge understood he the arguments understand very the well. Arguments, but the arguments sucked. Oh. I mean, on, on the, you got a 60B5 burden. And that's one thing that, that, that Leighton did not offer anything that was provable or acceptable or, or believable as far as the 60B5 burden went. That's the problem. And what the judge was saying is that you can get it changed if you can satisfy 60B-5. He said the stipulation is, is said it can, it can be changed if two things happen. Those two things haven't happened. 60B-5 says you can do things if certain things happen. Those things haven't happened. And it wasn't that he didn't understand them. I mean, he said some things like, uh, I got them written down. I just happen to have my notes here. I don't think you've read your adversary's briefs very carefully when he said that everybody agrees. He kept saying everybody agrees on this, and everybody didn't agree. Mm -hmm. well, it was clear that everybody didn't agree. And then the, the your Catch-22 argument, which is a very interesting argument, David. I must give you credit. I was going to say credit. You probably want the cash rather than the credit, but I would say the... the Catch-22 argument is the most catchy of all the Petco arguments right now. I was disappointed in Prashker's presentation. He was, I don't know, I, I can't vouch for him because I don't make his presentation and I don't write it for him. I don't do well, anything. yeah, I understand that, but, you know, other than Apple Hood and, and or Apple Pie and Motherhood, I... He, he, apple he, Pie and Motherhood, let me, let me take you, Apple Pie and Motherhood. Those men bowed their heads and prayed. They actually prayed. I've been to other conventions and seen people stand up. These men actually prayed. And when they were done praying, they pledged allegiance to the flag. And you know that now was... what the fuck? You know that was the only soliloquy that uh, Dick could get out that the judge did not interrupt at all. And then the judge said, hey, everybody in the armed services is underpaid too, and civil disobedience is not the way. I mean, come on. That stuff just didn't fly with him. He has decided against you people, as you knew quite well, a long time ago. Certainly. And there's something untoward has to occur, you know, like maybe your catch-22 argument. You know, you got to fire these people. You, they're not qualified to work as air traffic controllers. You know, and then what happens? It does present an interesting Hobson's choice. It does. It does present an interesting Hobson's choice, but you have to recall the theory of prosecutorial discretion as well. And uh, it's possible that the government might, you know, intend to violate something. And if the, if the people are forced to go back to work or to work and get paid, it's not slavery. They're going to get paid. And if the government wishes to do something that maybe some circuits say they can't do or should not do, Maybe the government would be interested in taking that risk, especially in an emergency situation. You never can tell. Huh? But but it's an, certainly an interesting argument. There's no question about that. Changing the subject for one second, I forgot to tell you about this Friday, and I was going to. Yeah. 
the uh, you remember the Rambo case in Chicago? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, yeah, I heard the judge ruled against it, dismissed yeah, he, it. He did. He did. I wanted to tell you Friday, but I didn't really. I, it wouldn't be appropriate to get too deeply into it Friday. Yeah, he said no subject matter jurisdiction. He said you're not covered by uh, OSHA. Did he reach the merits at all? No. Went right to the subject matter jurisdiction and dismissed them. And I don't have a copy of his opinion. I was just okay, because when Polino called in, he said there was some, quote, good language, close quote, and, but I haven't seen the decision I either. I haven't seen anything. It's going to be sent to me, I think, within the week, so I'll know that for sure. Okay. What else? What's going on? Uh, not a hell of a lot. It's kind of quiet, as a matter of fact. The gun is the, ju the judge's head, and he wouldn't take the gun away, David. Hey, what gun are you talking about? The gun is perceived in the judge's mind. And in the newspapers that the judge reads. <laughs> Do Wiccan write anything? I haven't seen a story. Uh, you want to hear it? Yeah, what's he say? A federal judge in a court where strikes by air traffic controllers have been under injunction since 1970 has warned controllers who have threatened a nationwide strike on June 22 that they would be risking severe penalties. At a hearing in federal district court in Brooklyn on Friday, Judge Thomas C. Platt told the controllers that the 1970 injunction was still in full force. He reminded them that their union, PATCO, could be heavily fined and sued for damages by injured parties and might even lose its bargaining rights. Quote, I think people will tell you I'm not exactly known as a soft judge, unquote, he added. Judge Platt, blah, 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 who had done this. And then he said, I will decide within 10 days if you keep me under the gun. But the union's attorney, Richard J. Layton, told the judge, I have no gun to put to your head, and said that the timing of a decision was up to the judge. The union wants the blah, blah, blah to be dropped on the ground that it has been superseded, which he spelled wrong. It set up new procedures, blah, blah, blah. Attorneys for, named all the people who were there, everyone, including the union attorney, agreed that strikes were illegal. What appears to be at stake is the question of how rapidly the government could get court action to stop a walkout if it should occur. The airline seems, the airline seems to believe that the quickest and probably the most effective action could be taken in court where the injunction was already in force. Yeah, he asked, he asked Prashker that, and Herb told him that, you know, you're, you have an advantage having an injunction here that you don't, <clears throat> you don't have to go through the basics, that you go right to contempt, you don't have to go through the bullshit. Mm -hmm. Uh, the June 22 strike deadline was set by the union at its annual convention last month. The union's president, Robert E. Paul, I won't ask him, and unless there was some movement in contract negotiations, there would be a strike. Only Congress has so-and-so, current base wages. What day was that in? I didn't... Yesterday's time. Sunday? Yeah, you got okay. it somewhere. Look at it. Yeah, we must have it here. I got to run. Are you going to be around later? Sure will. Let's, let's talk.